This is 5.6. We're connecting variation, slope, and first differences. Adam. You have learned to identify a linear relation from its graph, equation, and table of values. For example, from the graph of a linear relation, you can tell if it's a direct variation or partial variation, and calculate its slope. In addition, you can identify a linear relation from its table of values by calculating first differences. Consider the distance traveled by a snail over time. Is the graph of this relationship linear? How could you find the slope? In this section, you will learn how, how variation, slope, and first differences are connected. Good. The table shows the height compared to the ground of a snail as it crawls up a pipe. Graph the relation. Is this direct variation or partial variation? So, can anybody tell right away by looking at the graph if it's direct or partial? Mark? Partial variation. Why? Because the time and the height are different numbers. Oh, they're always going to be different numbers. They have to match on what value? You're right, I know what you mean, but on what? Zero. Right, so when time is zero, height has to be zero for it to be uh, direct variation. But in this case, at zero time, we have a height of negative three. So here is our first point. Next point, we have time of three, a height of one. Time of six, height of nine. And we get this kind of graph happening. Okay, that's easy enough. Is this direct or partial? Well, because it doesn't cross the origin at zero, zero, we know it has to be partial. Describe the pattern in the t-values. Use first differences to confirm that the relation is linear. So what's the pattern in the t-values? Tim. Good, it goes up by three each time. So more importantly, or importantly, it's consistent, the amount that it's going up by. Time. Next it says use first differences. So we know how to do that, first differences. Go here and put them between. So 1 plus 3 is 4. 5 minus 1 is 4. 9 minus 5 is 4. And 13 minus 9 is 4. <coughs> all right. So because all first differences are the same, we know then that it's a linear relationship. Calculate the slope, number 3. How would we do that? Slope, max. Uh, we have to go to, uh, uh, First of all, what does it equal, the slope? Um, it's m, it equals? It equals um, x2 minus x1. No. It's rise over run, and rise is? Sorry? You had it, but the other way around. Not x2, but starting on the top with? You got to memorize this, OK, Max? Tim? What? What's the formula? Justin? Y2 minus Y1 over x2 minus x1. Good. This, this formula doesn't go away, guys. You're going to have to memorize it, okay, Max? So, which, y, which one's y2 and which one's y1? Tyler? Well, since we know that uh, y2 has to be the furthest point, furthest point to the right, it would be our last set of data. So, it would, so our y... No, would, not necessarily. Well, I guess in this case... No, it doesn't have to be. It could be any y value, okay? Any, any y value other than the first one can be y2. Okay, that's important. We're going to learn that m more in a second, but if it's a straight line, it doesn't matter which two points on that line I take, you're going to get the same slope. Okay, and I'm going to prove that to you right now. So let's calculate the slope. Let's choose these two points here. So y2 minus y1 is 1 minus negative 3 over 
x2 minus x1 is 3 minus 0. So we get 4 over 3. All right, so that's our slope. That's using the first two points. If I use the third point and the fifth point, let's use these two points here. I'm going to do m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. y2, I'm going to say, is 13 minus 5 over 12 minus 6. I'm going to get 8 over 6, which is 4 over 3. Do you see how it doesn't matter? doesn't matter, any two points. The only reason I said can't be the first one is because if we're going to call this y2, y1 has to happen, you know, before y2. That's why. But really, it doesn't matter. I could even use these, these two points, right? Yeah. But if you did uh, time 0 and height negative 3 and time 12 and height 13, would that still count? What if I did... So what if you did the coordinate 0 and negative 3 and 12 and 13? Yep. Sure, let's do those. So 13 minus negative 3 over 12 minus 0. 16 over 12, which is 4 over 3. Okay? See that, guys? All right. So our slope of a straight line, doesn't matter any two points you pick, if we know it's a straight line, which we do because we check the first differences, you're going to get the same slope. Careful, if it's not a straight line, then you can't pick any two points, because if it's not a straight line, think about it, the slope is going to change wherever you, whatever two points you pick, right? <coughs> How does the slope relate to the first differences and the pattern in the t-values? Anybody? So here's my first differences, and here's my t values. Let me fill something in for you. How does the slope relate now? Yeah. The first, uh, the t value is the first difference over the y difference. The slope is the. So let's try that again. How does the slope relate to the first differences, and the pattern in the t values? So. The slope is the first difference over the difference in the t-values. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I, I misheard you. All right. Number five. What is the initial value of the height, Alvin? Good. Negative three. Time is zero. That's initial value always. Uh, Robert, write an equation of the line. So do you remember, Robert, what is the formula for the equation of a line? Excellent. You get that on your own or someone tell you? No, I got that. All right, very good. So, what's M? Um, yeah, you. M is... I'll give you a hint. We just calculated it four times in the previous questions. You see it? Um, nope. Three? Nope. Christian in the back? Yeah. Yeah, four over three, right here, Robert. We calculated M, 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 M. M. It's everywhere. Okay, never mind. You gotta pay attention, okay? So what's B now, Robert? Four. Nope. Let me try it again. M is four over three. Okay, it's the slope we just calculated. B is what? What does it represent in this equation? No. What does it mean? What is B? What is B in Y equals MX plus B? Luca, behind him. We talked about this yesterday and the day before. B, what is it? Yeah. Negative 3. Okay, but well, what is it? What is it in the general equation? Yeah. The Y intercept. Yes, the Y intercept. Very good. And the Y intercept occurs when time is 0, okay, Robert? So B is negative 3. Right there's our formula. 
How can we check if this formula is right, Sal? Uh, by testing it to see where it Yeah, how? How do we test it? Uh, you fill it in. Fill it in. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how to show it. Yeah. Uh, Michael? Uh, you fill in, uh, if you're doing the points 12, 13, you can fill. 13 in for Y and 12 for X. Excellent. So you can take any of these points, guys, and sub it into here, and you should get a formula that makes sense. So, for instance, if we took the point 3 and 1, and I'm choosing those points because they're nice and easy, I'm going to take 3 and I'm going to substitute that in for X, and I'll take 1 and substitute that in for Y. So what I'll end up with, 1 equals 4 over 3 times 3 minus 3. 4 thirds times 3, the 3's cancel, so I'm left with 4 minus 3, 1 equals 1. That's how I know my equation works. Okay? And it'll work for any point. It has to work for any point. If any of those points doesn't work, it's not right. Yeah? Can you do it with two different points again? Sure. Uh, you want 9 and 9? Sure. All right. 9, 9, 9, 4 thirds. 9 minus 3. Okay, 9 divided by 3 is 3 on the numerator. So 9 is equal to 12 minus 3. Okay, you guys okay with what I did here? 4 thirds times 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 3 stays on the numerator. 4 times 3 is 12. Okay? Yeah. Sure, I kind of don't understand why we put the height value uh, and substitute that for um, for y. Isn't y equal the slope? No. So m is the slope, and it's y over x. It's the difference in y over the difference in x. H is y because that's the dependent variable here, height. So for every like for every three minutes, it's Adding four, so that's why we have three over four is the constant. For oh, every constant. no, the, the units would be meters per minute. So every three minutes, he moves four meters up. Yeah. So like that's we have x to plug in for how how much uh, for the time. Ask that again. Sorry. We have the x variable to identify like which number we want to plug in. I'm not sure what you're asking. Well, I'm we just confused, like, um, for the y variable, why do we have height as, as the y? Because height is your dependent variable, and it's dependent on time. You have to have one as y, right? So you've got to decide, is it going to be time or is it going to be height? There's a couple reasons we would have height as the y variable. Okay, One is that it's measured. Two is that... Uh, Height is dependent on time because we're assuming he, this snail is moving in a constant rate. Time is not dependent on height, right? Okay, so that's why we have time on the on that's why we have time on the on the y on the x axis. Yeah, because it's okay. It's, it's independent. Right. Remember, dependent on y, independent on x. Tyler. So, sir, if y is the de uh, represents the dependent variable, how how is it different from b since they're both on the y axis? Because B is the y-intercept, y and y intercept, and y is just the actual axis itself. That's the difference between them. No, so y is the y value. It's not the axis itself. Oh. Okay. So, for instance, this point here, Tyler, do you see up there, is the coordinate 3, 1. Agreed? So this point has a y value of what? Uh, one, yes. It's not on the axis, right? But it still has a y value of one. B is always on the axis, okay? So B is the y value when x is zero, okay? So if I say B is four, what I'm really saying is z the point zero comma four. It's always on the y axis, okay? So B is always a zero coordinate for x. 
and then you have a y value for it. Christian. Um, this is kind of going back a few lessons, but in the equations, let's just say like a distance time graph, so y equals kx, and the constant represents the slope, and yeah. because it's a distance time graph, you look to the constant at a speed. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Moving right along. The slope of a linear relation remains constant. That's what we talked about. We said if it's a straight line, the slope is the same anywhere. The first differences also remain constant when the changes in the x values are constant. So we, we looked at that now for two days. The slope m of a line can be calculated by dividing the change in y by the change in x. So we've looked at this in length, right? The equation of a line has the form y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b represents the vertical intercept, the y-intercept, or the value of the dependent variable where the line intersects the vertical axis. Same thing. It's just a longer way of saying it. The graph shows the relationship between the volume of gasoline remaining in a car fuel tank and the distance driven. So this is the same one we looked at before. It looks like the graph's a little different but the same idea. Calculate the slope and describe its meaning. So Sal, how are we going to get the slope for this? So you're going to... Start off with the formula. So what is it, generally speaking? Rise over? Rise over run. Okay, good. And then what is that? Uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus y1. Good. Now, which points are you going to use? Okay. Distance, yeah. Sure. And, um, the 65 and 0, I guess, for volume. Okay, you're going to use these two points. That's fine. You didn't, you didn't have to, but because we can see it's a straight line, but that's fine. Let's use those two points. So what's Y2? Uh, Y2 is 500. Nope. Zero. Yes, good. And Y1? Nope. 65, 65. Oh, 65, X2? Um, 500. X1? Minus zero. Good. So we end up with negative 65 over 500, which reduces to, anybody? Uh, yeah, Justin? 13 over negative 13 over 100. Over? 100. All right. So there's our slope and describe its meaning. So the one way to get the meaning, guys, of the slope is always just look at the units. Joseph. Uh, how do you determine which one is y2 and which one is y1 and x2 and x2 and x1? The y, the y2 is always further to the right. Always. So like reading a, a book, one, two, right? You read from left to right. So the left point is always 1, and the right point is always 2. Okay? So if I pick this point and this point here, this would be uh, x1, y1, and this would be x2, y2. But 0 minus 65, it's 65 and 0. Yeah. The coordinates and where it goes, though. No idea what you're talking about. This point and this point? Yeah. But there's no, there's nothing on this point. The point is here, Joseph, up here. And the, the coordinate point is 0, 65. 0 is the x coordinate and 65 is the y. X always. Yeah. Uh, no. The reason why this is zero, Joseph, is because it's over here. It's zero. I was asking like why it's zero minus sixty-five instead of sixty-five minus zero. Because farther, right? Because this point is point two over here, and the y value of point two is zero. 
but you have to do it for both sides. Yeah. So you could do uh, y1 subtract y2, but on the bottom you have to do x1. Yeah, but I feel like I'm already losing you, and that's going to confuse him more. Yeah. I know, but that's like he's implying that he wants to do like that from here. He no, he's implying that he's not sure what's going on. He just doesn't know why. He doesn't know why the zero is the first number. Yeah, because it's, it's the x axis. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah x Okay. Thanks, Bill. I think it 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 was a bad choice of points because it's a little confusing, right? Because of the zeros on the x and the zero on the y. So let's do it again, right, Joseph? We're gonna use this point here, okay, and this point here. All right. So you're gonna help us out. So what is y two? if we're considering these two points here, okay? Can you see on the screen? Yeah. So what's y2? Uh, y2 is the two points on the left here. It's 100 minus 52. No. y2. So where is point 2? Is it this one or this one? It's, uh, wait, I can't see point 300. 300 minus 26. Okay, no. So you're taking the, the coordinate points of the same point and minus them, the x and y values at the same point. You can't do that. Okay? And I'm sure it's not just Joseph, okay? I'm sure there's other people that, that may be doing the same thing. Pay attention here, okay, Joseph? This point here is 326, okay? Why? Because it's 300 is the x value. Right here, Joseph, and then I go up 26, right? Okay, and this is point two. Okay, point one, what's the coordinate?